no matter how rough or strenuous your day may be, at least you will find solace in sleep, hopefully. And even though all of us don't get our eight hours of sleep all the time, sleep is often the most anticipated and necessary parts of your day. And today, we're going to take a look into the mysteries of EP time on the Sleep Iceberg. I'd also like to give a shout out to the person who made this iceberg because this is like the healthiest topic I've ever covered. Honestly, my quality of sleep has gotten a lot better just by researching a lot of these topics and understanding more about them. So I'd like to thank Just Dovis on Reddit for making this iceberg and allowing me to cover it here on the channel. So go ahead and grab a pillow, grab a blankie, get comfy, and without a fervor ador, let's get into the iceberg. And to start off the iceberg, we have REM sleep. REM sleep, or rapid eye movement sleep, is one of the many stages of sleep. REM sleep occurs in mammals and birds, and is characterized by, you guessed it, rapid eye movements. During this state of sleep, the body is completely paralyzed, which probably sounds scary, but that just means you're not flailing around while you're sleeping. And most notably is the stage of sleep in which the most vivid dreams are likely to occur. Dreams still occur in other forms of sleep, but they're a little more rare, and REM tends to have the more clear and cohesive dreams. REM sleep also boosts creativity in people who wake up from it due to the brain's heightened level of activity. And REM sleep is an important part of the sleep cycle, with a lack of REM sleep leading to many physical and mental issues. NREM sleep, or non-rapid eye movement sleep, consists of stages of sleep prior to REM sleep, and is often characterized by no eye movement or little eye movement. NREM sleep takes up about 80% of the sleep cycle, mainly where the body settles down and repairs itself. Brain, heart, and breathing activity will slow down to prioritize healing and maintenance, leading to dreaming being a rare occurrence. We will go more in depth regarding these stages after the next entry. Circadian rhythm is an internal process that organisms possess that regulates the sleep and wake cycles. These are pretty much the creature's internal clock with the human circadian rhythm being roughly 24 hours. To get more specific, circadian rhythm is regulated by a region in the hypothalamus known as the suprachiasmatic nucleus, I think, which uses light and regulates hormonal and heart rates along with melatonin production. Poor lighting conditions, jet lag, or poor sleep schedules can negatively impact your circadian rhythm along with your health as a whole. People all have unique circadian rhythms and chronotypes, which is why some people are early risers and some people are night owls, but there'll be more on that later. Now that we've covered REM and NREM sleep, now we can get a little more specific about the sleep stages. Sleep starts with four stages of NREM sleep, and the first two are considered light sleep. Stage 1 is the lightest and shortest form of sleep, consisting of the first 5 to 10 minutes of sleep. During this stage, the body begins to prepare for EP time, with eye movement, brain, and muscle activity all slowing down. This stage is also the easiest to disrupt. Stage 2 is the stage where you have fully fallen asleep and is still considered light sleep, lasting about 10 to 25 minutes and repeating throughout the night. This is where eye movement stops and body temperature, heart rate, and breathing begins to slow down while the brain shifts into sleep mode. With the presence of sleep spindles, which are bursts of activity, and high amplitude brain waves known as K-complexes. This stage of sleep is where your memory is consolidated and your metabolism begins to slow down. The largest sleep stage, lasting about 20 to 40 minutes, is stage 3 sleep and is the first stage of deep sleep, where it is the hardest to wake you up from. In this state, your body is fully relaxed and your heart rate and breathing are at their slowest. This stage is where most of the healing and recovery of your body and brain occurs. The fourth stage of NREM sleep is 
nearly identical to stage three, but includes different levels of brain activity. So for the most part, you can kind of lump, some people lump in stage four with stage three, but it's distinct enough to be its own stage. And after the NREM stage is complete, you will go into REM sleep. This stage of sleep is characterized by rapid eye movements that occur during this stage with temporary paralysis and vivid dreaming. Your breathing and heart rate tend to be similar to waking levels, but tend to be irregular, most likely due to the dreams that you're experiencing. This stage of sleep lasts for about 10 minutes, so yeah, your dreams actually are that short. I used to think that the brain kind of slows down your perception of time or something during these dreams, but I guess that's just how short these dreams are. And this stage is crucial for mental and emotional regulation and development. The stages of sleep will loop, but we'll have more on that later. Sleep hygiene is the practices that people do to maintain a healthy and consistent sleep routine. Sleep hygiene is right up there with diet and fitness when it comes to living a happy and healthy life. So having good sleep hygiene is prioritized by many, especially that one friend that goes to sleep at 10 instead of playing Fortnite with the homies. Tips for good sleep hygiene include adhering to your circadian rhythm, chilling out before bed, not eating or drinking anything high in calories or caffeinated before bed, limiting light exposure before bed, exercising on a consistent basis, and one that you may be surprised by, limiting the naps you take or not taking any naps at all. Napping may seem healthy, but inconsistent napping can throw off your entire circadian rhythm and make it harder to go to sleep at night. We'll also have more on this later. As touched on earlier during the sleep stages segment, you will undergo cycles throughout the night and will go through the stages of sleep several times every 90 to 120 minutes. Once REM sleep ends, you will go back to stage two and REM sleep will increase in duration throughout the night with each continuing cycle. On average, an EP boy will undergo four to six sleep cycles with these cycles being healthy for physical and mental recovery. Sleep apnea is a common breathing disorder where breathing slows or even stops while sleeping. There are three types of sleep apnea with obstructive sleep apnea taking up a vast majority of cases. Obstructive sleep apnea, which makes up 84% of cases, occurs when the muscles in the back of the throat are relaxed to the point to where they obstruct the airways. This form of apnea is prevalent in obese men and is often caused by obstructions due to large neck circumference, substance abuse, and can be passed down hereditarily. Central sleep apnea makes up 0.9% of cases and occurs when the brain stops sending signals it controls breathing while asleep. This tends to occur in older men who experience heart conditions, strokes, and certain medications. And the rest of cases tend to be a combination of the two forms of sleep apnea kind of fused together. Sleep apnea can have a variety of symptoms with it leading to disrupted sleep, morning headaches, fatigue, heart, breathing, and mental issues, and hormonal disruptions that can lead to obesity and even type 2 diabetes. It is best to identify sleep apnea and get it treated by a medical professional early to avoid further complications. Insomnia is a disorder that plagues far too many people, including me. Insomnia occurs when you struggle to go to sleep, stay asleep, or even just getting quality sleep in general. Leading cause of insomnia is stress, which in a screwed up chain of events leads to less sleep and more stress, so they, they just compound off of each other. Stress, anxiety, depression, bad sleep habits, and a lack of exercise can all lead to insomnia, and the only real cure is to just relax before sleep and try to improve your sleep hygiene. Proper sleep hygiene is the best way to prevent insomnia and other sleep disorders. So yeah, maybe think again before making fun of bro when he goes to sleep at 9 p.m. Dreams are one of the most interesting, inspiring, and just downright mysterious aspects of our lives outside of Fortnite. 
Dreams are mental landscapes and scenarios that we create during REM sleep, usually influenced by the dreamer's memories, mood, interests, and ideologies. Dreams also tend to implant false memories in the dreamer to further immerse the dreamer. I don't know how this happens for you, but it, I don't know how often it'll happen either, but it happens to me sometimes, and it's really weird to think that like a dream can give you different memories for the scenario. Dreams occur for 5 to 20 minutes per sequence, although they may be perceived as longer and have been recorded since the earliest civilizations. The interpretation of dreams has baffled people forever. After all, our brain is showing us these visions for a reason. They have to be happening for some reason. Religious people have interpreted their dreams as messages from the gods and the powers above, and creatives will use their dreams as inspiration in their works. The brain's heightened activity during this time can last after the dreamer awakens for a brief period, causing a period of heightened creativity that you may not notice due to being groggy from not getting good sleep. Dreams can occur in NREM sleep as well, like when you doze off in class, and will typically be less elaborate and shorter. And with dreams, we also have nightmares. Nightmares are uncommon yet unpleasant dreams that cause feelings of fear, sadness, anxiety, and despair. These dreams often start like normal dreams or everyday scenarios, but will suddenly or gradually devolve into dangerous or stressful incidents. Nightmares can put the dreamer into what they see as a life or death scenario, or sometimes events that involve loved ones being harmed. Nightmares can inflict feelings of dread even after the dreamer wakes, and it might take an hour until you can go back to sleep. These dreams also can tap into your memories, so if you have a very traumatic memory or whatever, it can occur in your nightmare, but again, more on that later. Lucid dreams are dreams where the dreamer knows they're in a dream. During a lucid dream, a dreamer may be able to manipulate and control certain aspects of the dream. Lucid dreaming is a skill that can be trained through meditation and techniques, and it tends to be far more vivid and are remembered more frequently than other dreams, probably due to the dreamer's access to memory. Due to the fascinating nature of lucid dreaming, they have been researched by people for hundreds of years. One interesting fact I found is that two-way communication is possible with somebody who is lucidly dreaming through eye and facial movements, with the user being able to answer complex questions that would require memory and could use their dreamscape to visualize proposed scenarios. Lucid dreams are also used by creatives as real-world physics don't apply in dreamscapes, and the only limit really is your mind. Many lucid dreamers document their dreams and eat diets that prioritize lucid dreaming, some even taking several drugs that allow them to lucid dream more consistently. And to start tier 2, we have sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is a phenomenon in which you wake up and are unable to move your body or talk. A good bit of people have experienced this, and I have too, and it wasn't super scary to me outside of one experience, but it was still weird as hell. You were basically laying there unable to move for like 30 seconds to a minute until you slowly gain back control. Sleep paralysis usually occurs in people with sleep disorders like insomnia, sleep apnea, and narcolepsy, and results from you waking up before your brain does. Basically, your body is still in REM sleep, meaning it is paralyzed from the sleep you're ex you were experiencing, and you pretty much just lie there and wait for your brain to signal your body to wake up. Many people describe sleep paralysis as terrifying, mainly from not being able to move. But there is another aspect that makes it even more scary, but let's save that for later. Hypnagogic hallucinations are hallucinations that occur when trying to fall asleep. These hallucinations are brief and are pretty common, and even though these hallucinations can be scary in the moment, there isn't really anything to worry about if you experience them. 
The reason they happen is because you are in a state known as hypnogagia, in which you are kind of between awake and asleep at the same time. So your dreaming mind is becoming active way too early. And hypnopompic hallucinations are pretty much the opposite of hypnagogic hallucinations, occurring when you're waking up from sleep to wakefulness and tend to be pretty scary. And unlike hypnagogic hallucinations, stress, anxiety, and depression are large contributors to these hallucinations, so they're probably pretty bad. Keep these hallucinations in mind for later, though, because they'll be a little more relevant. Melatonin is the hormone that makes you sleepy. It is produced in the pineal gland and is regulated based upon your circadian rhythm and the light levels you receive throughout the day. This is why you are tired and sluggish if you stay in a dark room and can't get sleep when online late at night. Outside of sleep, melatonin also plays a large role at regulating your immune system, mood regulation, and even as antioxidant properties. Melatonin can also be used in digestible tablets and gummies that can help you snooze off and are typically used by people with sleep issues. Also fun fact, turkey actually doesn't have melatonin in it, but it has an amino acid called tryptophan, which we will talk about later, but basically it turns into serotonin, which converts into melatonin. More on that later though. Sleepwalking is a condition most common in children that involves a person walking or doing some activity while asleep. This tends to happen in the first few hours of sleep when the individual is in deep sleep and this is typically harmless, but depending on the environment that they wake up in, it can quickly become very dangerous. Sleepwalking can be caused by sleep deprivation, stress, certain medications, and even can be passed down hereditarily. This condition is highly treatable and technically nothing to worry about, so no need to shackle yourself to your bed unless you're into that kind of thing, but hey, that, we're not here for that. We're not that kind of sleep iceberg, bro, chill. Sleep talking is a condition where you yap in your sleep. This condition is pretty common and typically involves the individual just spurting nonsense, literally yapping, literally me, while asleep. Although sometimes it can be coherent, correlating to an event or the dream that they are experiencing. Sleep talking is generally harmless to the individual, only lasting from seconds to possible minutes. Although this really can be harmful to the people around you can be especially annoying if you're sharing a bed with somebody. Sleep talking is usually a symptom of a problem if there is any, but on its own it's only annoying to others. Although sleep talking can accompany sleepwalking, which in that case it could be a blessing because then someone can hear you sleep yapping before you can harm yourself while sleepwalking, so that, that can be helpful. Night terrors are a sleeping disorder that can cause feelings of horror or panic, and no, they are not the same as nightmares. Night terrors are common in children and are set apart for a couple of reasons. For starters, night terrors occur in NREM sleep, typically during stages 3 and 4, during the first or second sleep cycle. Night terrors also have the terrifying quality of being hard to escape from once it starts, meaning unlike nightmares, you may have to sit through the entire thing before waking up. So no, your kid isn't being a wimp. Even though these can cause conditions on par with panic attacks, the individual tends to go back to sleep and will largely forget about it in the morning. Night terrors typically occur due to poor sleep hygiene, but will also just kind of happen in growing children and they will go away and become less common the older they get. Polyphastic sleep is a routine in which the individual will sleep more than twice a day. These rests usually consist of naps during the day with a larger yet shortened sleep at night. These sleep schedules are common in babies for the first three months, but they are also common in most animals, most notably cats and dogs. 
which can be rough experiences for new parents and animal adopters to get used to. There is no evidence that polyphasic sleep is healthy routines for uh, grown adults and could also be detrimental for overall sleep hygiene. So it's best not to follow a polyphasic sleep schedule for long. Binaural beats is a form of sound wave therapy that helps with stress and promotes better sleep, along with a vast array of other things. The way this works is because our ears register sound differently. So by playing two separate tones in each ear, with the left tone being, say, 250 hertz, while the right is 260 hertz, the brain will detect that there is a 10 hertz difference and create a third tone. And by doing this, the brain will create brain waves similar to those created during certain scenarios in a phenomenon known as brainwave entertainment. So the 10 hertz difference example would be a form of alpha brainwave entertainment used for relaxation and creativity, while a 4 to 8 hertz is theta wave, which would be used for light sleep, relaxation, and meditation. And 1 to 4 hertz being delta waves, which are waves found in deep sleep. You can also take this for in the opposite direction and use it for a higher stimulation, with beta waves at 13 to 30 hertz being used for alertness, focus, and active thinking, and gamma waves at 30 or over hertz being used for high-level learning and processing. Binaural beats can vary in effectiveness from person to person, and headphones are necessary, but these can be very helpful tools for anyone trying to reduce stress, meditate, enhance concentration, and even help with sleep. Several mixes at different frequencies are available right here on YouTube, so if you want to try them out, you might want to give it a shot. I know I will. Due to the nature of polyphasic sleep, there are multiple different cycles that one could follow. The everyman sleep cycle consists of three 20 minute naps spaced out throughout the day with a three hour core sleep granting you four hours of sleep total. Cryphasic sleep, which I think is the best of these sleep cycles, has three sleep periods with all of them ranging from about 1.5 to 2 hours giving you about 6 hours of sleep. And on the more extreme end of the examples, Dymaxion sleep cycles consist of four 30 minute naps every six hours, along with the Uberman sleep cycle, where there are six 20 minute naps taken every four hours, with both of these cycles only netting you about two hours of sleep. These cycles are very dangerous as important sleep stages are being either partially or entirely missed due to excessive naps and low core sleep time. Triphasic sleep at least allows you to undergo complete sleep cycles before waking up consistently, but even then you should really be shooting up for about 8 hours of sleep. There is another sleep cycle that I will talk about in a minute, because it technically doesn't count as polyphasic, but more on that later. Wet dreams is when a dude blasts in his trousers while asleep. Wet dreams are common during puberty in males with testosterone production increasing, with them becoming <laughs> coming, less common the older they get and the more stable their hormone production and testosterone production becomes over time. And for the first and only bonus entry of this iceberg, we have biphasic sleep. Biphasic sleep is a sleep cycle where one sleeps twice in four hour intervals. Unlike polyphasic sleep, biphasic sleep isn't detrimental to the sleeper's health, as having two core sleep cycles allows one to get the same amount of sleep that a standard monophasic sleeper would receive. It is kind of a matter of preference, with some people preferring this schedule over the default, and some biphasic sleep schedules shift to more six core hours and a quick nap during the day but i'd recommend avoiding that and sticking to this one because scientists have even said that this sleep cycle is a healthy one that you could follow if you want to 
And moving down to tier three of the iceberg, we have sleep spindles. And sleep spindles are brainwave patterns found during NREM sleep, specifically occurring during stage two of NREM sleep and being generated in the thalamus, the region of the brain that serves as the body's relay system and is responsible for the senses excluding smell, memory, learning, sleep, and consciousness. Due to this, sleep spindles are seen as integral for memory and sensory processing, although their impact on memory is debated. These waves fluctuate at ranges of 11 to 12 hertz at a duration of half a second to one and a one half seconds. Also referred to as a sleep deficit, sleep debt is the cumulative effect stemming from missing hours of necessary sleep. If you miss an hour of sleep for five days, then you'd have a sleep debt of five hours. These missed hours may seem harmless at first, but the more sleep you miss, the more negative effects and sleep debt tends to pile up. Short-term effects of sleep debt include tiredness, weakened immune systems, and reduced focus, and long-term effects could be resulting in high blood pressure, heart disease, obesity, and diabetes if left unchecked. To pay off your sleep debt, you simply need to get more sleep than usual. However, it's not as simple as just getting another hour of sleep. A mere hour of sleep can take up to four days to fully pay off, and it is easy to lose another hour in that time. To prevent accumulating sleep debts and just to avoid having one altogether, it's best to just maintain good sleep hygiene. As mentioned a bit earlier in the iceberg, chronotypes are categories used to determine an individual's circadian rhythm. Chronotypes are broken up into four categories, bear, lion, wolf, and dolphin. Bear is the most common chronotype with individuals rising and resting with the sun. Lions, also known as early birds, wake up and go to sleep early. So if you're a morning person, you'd fall into this category. The wolf, or the night owl, tends to make the sleep later at night, and I'd say I'm probably in this category. And the dolphin, which is the rarest chronotype, struggles to sleep entirely, being awake often but generally tired. Your chronotype will change over the course of your life, with everyday circumstances shaping the way that your sleep schedule changes. Sleep inertia is pretty much that grogginess that you feel when you wake up. Sleep inertia is generally caused from waking up from NREM sleep before your brain reduces its delta waves that are active during these stages. This is why when you wake up from a dream, you may feel reduced grogginess, and you may even feel reduced grogginess if you wake up early during a dream. And due to this occurring in NREM sleep, Hitting snooze and sleeping for another 20 minutes can end up just making it worse. Sleep inertia causes temporary disorientation, drowsiness, and poor memory, thinking, and learning skills. Which is why I think school being held early in the morning is really dumb. There's a lot more in this iceberg that backs that up. Let me talk about that a lot. And I can recall having a bit of sleep inertia while writing this part, funnily enough. The best way to deal with sleep inertia is to just get up, get some sunlight, stay hydrated, and try to do something physical, like a light walk, and you'll eventually get rid of it. And the best way to prevent it altogether is to just have a good sleep cycle and tend to wake up towards the end of your last cycle and not in the middle of it or in the middle of a new cycle. Hypnic jerks are involuntary movements you make as you are falling asleep. And falling asleep is a funny way of putting it because these movements are caused by the brain misinterpreting the signals from the relaxed muscles as if they were falling. Basically what happens here is the muscles relax so fast that the body thinks that it is airborne. These movements occur in stages one and two of an REM sleep and end after that. They are typically harmless, but frequent or severe jerks can wake up the sleeper and can trigger anxiety. Hypnic jerks can be caused by caffeine, nicotine, late exercise, stress, and sleep deprivation. REM rebound is a side effect of sleep debt, 
which increases the duration and intensity of REM sleep to compensate for lost sleep. This rebound is typically caused by sleep deprivation, but can also be triggered by the usage or withdrawals from certain medications. REM rebound is considered a healthy process that prioritizes quality sleep, although it is important to keep sleep schedules in check and to make sure that REM doesn't take away ex excessive amounts of time from the other stages of NREM sleep. Sleep architecture is pretty much the overall structure of a person's sleep. We tend to go through a sleep cycle lasting about 9 to 120 minutes and will undergo these cycles of sleep four to six times at a healthy sleep schedule of eight to nine hours of sleep. And of course, NREM will take up most of that time, leaving REM sleep with about 10 to 25 percent of the total sleep architecture, giving up about two hours of REM sleep and the rest being NREM. Throughout the night, REM sleep will gradually become larger in duration, most likely to prepare the sleeper to wake up from REM sleep instead of NREM sleep. Healthy sleep architecture is indicative of good sleep hygiene, so it is important to snooze safely, my friends. Dream incubation is a technique where you try to have certain events or topics play out in a dream. For example, if you were to have a boxing match, you may try to visualize this match repeatedly before going to bed until you finally have that dream fight. This technique is an advanced problem solving technique that uses your unconscious mind as a sandbox. These dreams may be similar to lucid dreams, and if you're skilled and lucky enough, you may use both techniques. Dream incubation is different though, as you are focusing on a single thing while going to sleep to manifest it in your dreams. A sleep clinic is a medical building that focuses on sleep via sleep studies. Sleep studies involve the patient staying overnight in most instances and sleeping while hooked up to machines through electrodes. During these sleep studies, doctors will monitor a variety of variables in order to identify symptoms and diagnose possible sleep disorders. Typically, you would go to get sleep studies done if you have been having sleep-related disorders to get a formal diagnosis. These sleep studies are pretty important to get, so if you can afford them, it's worth getting it done. As most of you have probably heard, blue light from screens can actually be quite harmful to a person's sleep. The reason behind this is that our brain interprets blue light coming from our devices as daylight, probably confusing it for the blue sky. This stops our brain from releasing melatonin and pretty much tricks itself into staying awake. This is why it is important to limit screen time before bed or use blue light glasses and nighttime screen filters. Most operating systems and devices come equipped with filters to cut off blue light during nighttime. On the other side, red light has the opposite effect, increasing melatonin production and also boosting testosterone. So. If you're trying to get jacked, that can also help. This is also why a lot of nighttime filters are red or have a reddish-orange hue to them. And starting tier 4 of the iceberg, we have false awakenings. False awakenings are when you wake up from a dream only to be in another dream. These false awakenings can feel realistic, sometimes having you wake up in your house or even in your bed, leading to you getting ready for your day when you unknowingly never woke up to begin with, and then you just wake up and you're like, what, what happened? False awakenings can also occur in multiple dream sequences, leaving the dreamer to have to manage all of them. And they can also be reoccurring nightmares. These sequences can be quite unsettling as you may never know when you actually wake up. Hell, you could be asleep right now, watching this video again in your dreams. Thanks for the dream view. If that's the case, I definitely appreciate it. Wake up, though. Exploding head syndrome, which despite its name, it isn't as bad as it sounds, but it's still pretty bad. Exploding head syndrome is a disorder where loud auditory hallucinations occur while going to sleep or waking up from sleep. 
These hallucinations are loud and realistic, causing the person to jolt back awake. And not a whole lot is known about what causes this disorder, but culprits include stress, anxiety, and certain medications. Narcolepsy is a neurological disorder that causes sudden tiredness throughout the day. Even if you wake up feeling well rested, a wave of tiredness might hit you when you least expect it, sometimes causing you to fall asleep altogether. Waking someone up from these sleep attacks may result in them being confused or disoriented upon awakening, with possible paralysis and fatigue accompanying it. Narcolepsy is a lifelong condition and you may never fully escape it. However, with treatment, symptoms can be greatly improved, making it more bearable. The condition is hereditary, but also can be caused from major stress or hormonal effects, along with infections and a certain vaccine is pandemrix. Hypersomnia is a word to describe the condition of excessive sleepiness despite being well rested. Hypersomnia can greatly impede a person's physical, mental, and emotional being, leaving them tired and fatigued. Hypersomnia can be broken up into primary and secondary hypersomnia, with the primary category being tied to idiopathic hypersomnia. Idiopathic hypersomnia is a lifelong condition in which the individual is constantly oversleeping and tired. And secondary hypersomnia is seen as more of a symptom in those with other sleep disorders like narcolepsy, depression, and sleep apnea. Sleep-related eating disorder is a bizarre disorder where a person just up and makes food while asleep. So yeah, that funny story about your relative sleep making a sandwich is probably real. People in this state are typically hard to wake up as they're typically transitioning into deep sleep when this occurs and they'll have no memory of preparing the food. This rare condition is a possible side effect of certain sedatives, especially if you are related to or are a sleepwalker or have other eating disorders. Astral projection, while not being super linked to sleep, is an esoteric technique that allows a user to explore reality outside of their bodies. These out-of-body experiences involve the soul or a projection of the soul to explore the world or universe around them while their body lays dormant. You can think of the body as asleep while the, the dream is what the spiritual body is experiencing. Cultures all around the world from ancient Egyptian, Amazonian, Inuit, Hindu, Japanese, Chinese, and even Judeo-Christian cultures documenting a similar method of astral projection. The idea of astral projection has captured the interest of many people, including the CIA. And although studies have revealed that these methods aren't real, many conspiracy theorists believe that our government is using psychics with techniques such as astral projection and covering it up, saying it isn't real so that they can get all the juicy info through these projections. Shared dreaming is a phenomenon where you and somebody else have an identical or near identical dream. Many see this as proof that you and your homie are destined besties and are literally on the same wavelength. Some even describe these dreams as if they're in a dream at the same time, like it's a co-op multiplayer game. Shared dreaming doesn't have to be a carbon copy of the same dream, as you probably wouldn't even remember most of the dream by the time you woke up to tell your bestie about it. It could be chalked up to you and your friend having similar interests and the two of you having identical dreams with a common factor being an overlapping theme in these dreams. Shared dreaming has also been used in religious and fictional pieces to foretell some sort of prophecy to a dreaming collective. If only I could send out notifications that way, that would be nuts. And uh, more on that later. I'm going to be doing that a lot. I like doing that. REM behavior disorder is a disorder where a dreamer moves in bed as they are having a dream. This occurs when the muscle paralyzing quality of REM sleep isn't present and the dreamer thrashes, making hand gestures, and may even begin punching and kicking. 
This also tends to be common in dreams where you're in an altercation, so you could be winning a 3v1 in your dreams just to wake up finding you comboed your dog off the bed, and then it's his turn, and then you're cooked. RBD often has been an early symptom in more severe diseases like Parkinson's, multiple system apraphy, and Lewy body dementia. Unlike these more severe conditions, RBD can be treated with melatonin by itself. Sleep cramps are cramps that usually occur in the legs while you are asleep and they absolutely suck. Like other cramps, they'll usually occur if you have exhausted your muscles without stretching or if you have a nerve problem. And as someone who got these, bro, there's like nothing worse than waking up with a cramp in your calf. It's so fucking awful. And if you're experiencing sleep cramps, it is best to stretch before going to sleep as well as before and after working out. And starting to your five of the iceberg, we have theta waves. Theta waves, as mentioned prior, are brain waves that are measured in frequencies of four to eight hertz. These brain waves are often found during meditation, relaxation, spurts of creativity, daydreaming, learning, memory, and of course, sleep. Theta waves tend to be present in stage one of NREM sleep and come back again during REM sleep. As mentioned earlier, Binaural beats are often used to enhance theta wave activity for meditation and for dreaming. And delta waves are the slowest brain waves that our noggins can produce, ranging in frequencies of 0.5 to 4 hertz. Delta waves are found in our deepest stages of sleep, when our body heals and recovers. Delta waves are also tied to growth and development of our bodies, and minds as these waves are abundant in growing children and tend to decrease in activity as we grow older and again you can use binaural beats to engage in meditation and increase delta wave production while sleeping sleep is important for our body's functions but one system that tends to be more affected than most is our immune system the immune system tends to be the first major system to be affected when sleep deprived, making it easier to catch illnesses and harder to cope with them. When we sleep, specifically in stage free sleep, using delta waves, which are being produced, our immune system is able to go into maintenance mode, communicating any potential problems and dealing with them accordingly. And when we do get sick, the immune system will often make us tired to encourage us to sleep in order to allocate as much energy towards fighting off the illness as possible. Those who have high quality sleep tend to recover from illnesses quicker and get sick less often. Adaptive dreaming is a concept that suggests that dreams are integral to overcoming and adapting to our everyday struggles. This is due to the vast variety of scenarios that our brains puts us in across the several dreams that we have each night. The scenarios exist to hone our problem-solving, emotional processing, mental fortitude, and memory reinforcement. Documenting and reflecting on these dreams and how to deal with them can be the key insight into how we respond to certain events and how we can apply that to issues that we face or to enhance our creativity. Techniques like lucid dreaming and dream incubation can be used to better enhance our dreams to deal with specific scenarios, either to cope with the, a trauma or to explore potential outcomes. The purpose and importance of dreams is a widely discussed topic, and adaptive dreaming is just one of many proposals, and it seems pretty legit to me. Microsleeps are sudden periods of sleep that only last for a few seconds. These occur when theta waves briefly replace alpha waves, putting you into a sleep mode for a short period. The sudden and unpredictable nature of these microsleeps can be extremely